Sooner Scoop HD. It's good, you know, you can see some carryover. Um, you know, anytime you've done something twice or you go through it a second time, um, there's some familiarity with these guys as far as the coverages, and uh, that's kind of been refreshing. You know, a thing I've learned in, in coaching is you kind of really forget what you really didn't understand, and you really lock in on what you did. And so now that we're going into a second time, there's a lot of carryover, and you can see a lot more confidence. Those guys are playing a lot faster because of it. Is there carryover for the coaches as well? Yeah. From yeah, heck either. yeah. You know, that, I think that goes for everyone. Even for us, you know, you're able to think faster and, and you know, really hone in on the, on the little things, you know, for us, you know, it's a learning experience as well. And, and uh, trying to figure out ways to communicate better and, and, and fine tune our teaching is, is something that I think that we've done a good job of, you know, than the second time through. As far as your crop of newcomers, what impresses you about them? What excites you about them? First off, they're good people and they love football. You know, what's really good is, you know, Coach Venables puts such, such an emphasis on guys, you know, preparing when they've got their own time. And, and so we've got a bunch of guys who've now come through this a second time. And, They've taken those young guys under their wing and they've taught those guys how to prepare, how to learn in the free time and take advantage of when we're not around and really kind of teaching each other. And that's something that I don't think last year they quite understood yet. And, I, and you're seeing a lot more of that this year. Is Bukari playing safety? No, he's no. not. He's playing corner force right now. As you know, though, in, in all the multiple packages that we play, uh, these guys can play a variety of positions. So. I don't think we've had a chance to talk to you on record since signing day back in December. So how arduous of a process was it throughout Peyton's recruitment? Of course, that was one of the hottest topics Did of conversation. Did say arduous? <laughs> Is that arduous? That's a lot. Well, you know, it, at the end of the day, I was very proud of him. I think it's something that he always wanted to do. Um, I think it's really hard, especially in this day and time, when you have a lot of things and a lot of, a lot of people in your ear. And uh, I think he showed a lot of maturity in, in doing what he wanted to do at the end of the day. Um, as, as you know, we've all got to make growing up decisions, and that won't be the last one he's made. Um, but I definitely think it's something that he learned from. I think he's at peace. And, and the, the really cool thing for me is, you know, in the recruiting, the recruiting process, you see what these young men go through and how as the time goes and the stress builds, how it really weighs on them. And then once you see it's over and he gets on campus and he's still that same person that you, you met the first time back in January is really cool for me and and just watching you know these guys open up and, and really seeing their uh, you know their you know who they are their personalities come come to light. He's a freshman is it moving real fast for him right now? Well it, it moves fast yeah <laughs> really fast you know we uh, as you guys know we're very multiple in what we do and, and Coach Venables is very demanding and, and uh, you know he expects perfection which we all do as coaches and on top of that it's the effort piece and so when you're coming from high school to college and you have to start all over again um, you know, it's when you're, you know, things go twice as fast and you're having to learn twice as fast and you're having to learn twice as much, it takes time. And, and the thing that you value in this profession more than anything is experience. And uh, when those bullets start flying, being able to uh, ignore the noise, so to speak, ignore the speed and just lock in on, uh, on what you're supposed to do. What, what does it mean to you guys adding a guy like Pearson, who's played so much great football? Two different places. You can tell he's played a lot of snaps. You know, you know, everyone knows he's a physical football player. Um, but the thing that I, you know, I appreciate most about him is because of the amount of snaps he's played, he doesn't get rattled. And you can, you know, he's been under a number of coaches, obviously. And I think sometimes that's a good thing because all you've got to do is figure out that language barrier and how to communicate with them and, and basically say, hey, this is like that and this is like this. And, and he's very confident in himself. He's quiet. He's a learner. Uh, and he's a leader. And he really takes the younger guys under his wing and tries to help those guys out as well. Did you see that kind of year two jump with Robert this spring? Yeah. I, you know, the thing is, is again, he, he should have been in high school last year at this time and, and, you know, going through spring ball. And sometimes we forget that. And as a guy that hadn't played defense for very long, he hadn't played safety. And, uh, you know, he's, he's very talented. He's very smart. He's going to have an unbelievable career here. Um, but you're starting to see, you know, that, that athletic ability come through. And, and, you know, it'll only get better and better with the more confidence he gets. You talked about the difference in just year one and year two with your guys understanding, going through the scheme and all that type of stuff. But can you individually with Billy Bowman and Key Lawrence, can you talk about the difference year one and year two with those two? I think for Key, it, it, for me, I've seen a huge jump. Um, he was somebody last year you could tell at times was thinking too much. Uh, and you're seeing him start to make a lot more plays, had interception today. And I think that just comes from confidence and not having to think and playing fast. And, and uh, he's starting to smile a lot more. And that's something I can see that he's enjoying playing the game. You know, we all know how competitive Billy is. Uh, Billy wants to be a leader. Billy cares. Billy wants to win every rep. 
And, you know, the thing about Billy is, is Billy's worst enemy is always going to be him. He holds himself to such a high standard. And, and uh, the good thing for him is, is he gets more and more experience in this defense. I think that you're going to start to see him become more vocal, and that's something that we need at our position the most. With, it, with McCarty recovering from that knee injury, what's his process been like this spring just as far as getting up to speed on everything, and how involved has he been? We hold him just as accountable as everybody else in meetings and walkthroughs. Um, we expect him to take notes just like everybody else. He's got workout groups at 6.30 in the morning just like everybody else. And the only thing that he doesn't do that everybody else does is go full speed in practice. Um, but he sits right next to me in meetings, and, and I make sure that he's taking notes and getting ready and asking questions. So he's he's locked in just like the rest of them. It seems like there's a certain level of comfort that comes with the fact that you can sit here and talk about five, six, seven guys at the safety position right now. Well, yeah, I mean, to me, as much as anything, after a year, they get to know my personality, and more importantly, I get to know them. You know, I want to I wanna teach them in the best way possible, and everybody's different. And so in time, you start to understand um, how to communicate better with guys. Some guys, they want more video. Some guys, they need to draw it on paper. Some guys, you got to walk them through it. You got to talk them through it. And so as I start to learn their personalities, I can really reach them, you know, where, you know, they need it the most as far as how to teach those guys. Is it more simply said that that group's just better right now than they were a year ago just by product I, of numbers i think yeah i mean we're deeper that's yeah. you know i mean we're deeper and we and we've got more experience in this system and we'll have more experience the next year and the year after and that just comes with time um and we like i said we're very multiple in what we do um and we ask a lot of our safeties to do a lot of things and to play a lot of different techniques and in time as we get better and we get more experienced um you're going to see less of a learning curve and more of a you know an opportunity to make plays what do you hope to what see you? out of key this spring just for me, continuing to take a leadership role, the thing that I think that he's done the best job of that I think that he was trying to figure out this time last year is just how to be the example for the younger guys, taking notes, asking questions, um, being a guy that basically stands up and says, hey, let's, let's go do this, let's work on this. Um, we only have so many hours in a day that we can spend with these guys because of rules. And he's starting to be one of those guys that's like, hey, let's all meet up here at this time and do this. And those are things that make you a leader. Those are things that make your defense better. What does it say about just the staff in general that in the transfer portal era that you guys were able to, in a matter of 12 months, kind of flip the safety position and flipped a number of positions I think it's just the day and time we live in and I you know as you guys know recruiting is you know used to be a 24 hour day now I think it's about a 27 hour day and, and it's 375 days a year now and, and it's something that we have to continue to do and, and with the opportunity for guys to leave obviously to go to the NFL early you constantly have to have um, you know a pulse on your team but also a pulse on, on where guys are at in the portal and what they're doing and you're just trying to find the best fit culturally for your team and I think that's something that coach Venables has put such a value on is he wants great people but he wants great you know great players but he wants great people and uh, you know I think that's something that we've done a good job of is bringing really good people into our program. Brandon it looked like Damon Harmon uh, really matured last year during the season then had the injury but then came back fairly quickly what's his spring been? You know, it's, he's like anybody else. I think he's starting to settle in a little bit. He's obviously very talented and very athletic, explosive. He's got great ball skills, as everyone knows. And the more snaps that he plays, the more time that he, so to speak, you know, is not thinking, you know, obviously you'll start to see that talent show. Overall in this defense, Brandon, what do you, what do you think about this spring, second year in Brent's stuff, and how do you think it's going? It's going really well. You know, I think uh, – you're starting to see, especially in the back end, you know, like you guys have said, we've got a little bit of depth, we've got some length, uh, we've got some guys that can run, and again, there's a lot of carryover. And so when you're not having to install as much, when you're not having to talk through the coverages and all the different things that go along with that, you're able to start focusing on the techniques and the, the details, and that's when you start getting really good. Sooner Scoop HD.